Hey YouTube, it's Laura here with Little Lights by Laura, and I'm back. So, um, I have been gone forever, and I'm so sorry, but it has been a crazy year here. I had a baby, we moved, it's just been nuts. But, not to worry, because I got some more videos coming your way. First and foremost, though, I just wanted to do a quick, um another round of newbies tutorial because silhouette updated their software and it is a little overwhelming and it's a whole lot of good going on so here we go let's jump right into it because you guys know me i like to make it quick and simple for you so page setup not much has changed here um here you can adjust your the size of your page if you want to make it smaller so you can stay in size um to not waste vinyl or paper that's how you can make your adjustments there you can change your orientation. You can change what style cutting mat you're using right here. You can change your reveal, which as you know is one of my favorite things to do because I need to be seeing my squares. You can um, turn on your print border and your cut border. This is a super, super important thing to do so that you're not running outside of your um, cut parameters. And I'll show you real quick, just like I did last time. So here, um, I'm going to zoom in real quick. Let's say I wanted to make this um, as as close to the edge as I possibly can. And I wanted to make it, you know, six inches long. So I would just go here and pull out my corners as far as I can. And cool, yeah, I'm all the way to the edge of my vinyl. I'm going to use very little vinyl. But if I turn on my cup border, I'm going to lose part of my L. So it's really important just make sure you keep that turned on at all times it'll make your life so much easier and you won't be wondering why you're losing letters then here if you want you can turn on your grids it shows you this uh, breakdown of each individual inch you can um, turn your snap grid these are things i don't personally use the ruler i get asked this all the time i believe this is still a designer edition upgrade as you can tell right here i have designer edition um, if you don't have it, it's something you should definitely consider purchasing. I am not affiliated with Silhouette at all. I don't have any commission by you buying Designer Edition or not, but it's so worth it, you guys. Um, and then here, this is just your, if you want to change the color of your mat, you can. This is your registration marks. For those of you that do print and cuts, you can turn it on or off here. Inverted um, or default, and this will also allow you to change the, shot, the size. Oh, can't talk. Pixis scan, um, I personally have not used this yet, but it sounds and looks amazing. But here's your icon for it. You can scan in or you can um, upload your photograph in. Here, this is your fill option. Um, this is something that 9 times out of 10, I always use black fill, black lines. If you want, you can um, do the um, color gradient and the pattern change if you want to change um, how your letters are filled in or how shape is filled in and um, go from there then from here you have your line style um, this and your color style too um, for me like i said i always do black on black because nine times out of ten i'm doing a mock-up for a customer and i'm just doing something so that they can see um, what their design is going to look like Unless I'm making them a shirt, then I'll go ahead and I'll color each um, word individually, especially if you are doing your um, cutouts by color, which I have a video for that. And um, I think I'll run through that in the newbies part two as well. So, um, but real quick, just like I showed you guys before, um, on the line style here, if you want to change the style um, to dashed, um, you can do that here, or this is how you do the polka dot circle that I've shown you guys in the other videos. Um, if you hold your shift key, so I'm going to click shift, and then I'm going to make a circle with my mouse, and then I'm going to let go of my mouse, and then I'm going to let go of my shift key. From here, um, before I show you guys this though, I'm going to go back to my mouse, and I'm going to choose no fill on my circle because I want to show you um, the polka dots instead. So I'm going to go back to my line. I'm going to choose my line style here. And then um, you can select whatever you want on your style. 
we'll go with this one. And then you would change your thickness, and there's your polka dots. Now, um, I've had people ask me, why aren't my polka dots cutting out? It doesn't make sense. I don't, I don't, all I'm seeing is, is like marking on my vinyl. I'm not getting an actual circle. The trick that I have found to that is to then trace said polka dots, which ironically is the next icon. So you're going to select your trace area. I'm going to draw your box around it, and I have my little G hooked up in there, but that's not a big deal. I'm not going to use it if it does trace, but if it is bothering you, then you can move it down, whatever. Okay, so one of the upgrades Silhouette did here is you no longer have to uncheck your high-pass filter box. You can just go on ahead with it, but I'm going to zoom in to show you. See how that's not a perfect um, circle? I'm going to up my threshold. And even though that looks like it's going to be a hot mess, because it's a circle, it's going to work. So I'm just going to click Trace, and then I'm going to scoot it away. And there's that connection to that G, which I'll show you really quick how to get that off. Now these will cut out, whereas these most likely will not, because your silhouette is going to think that these are lines, even though they look like polka dots on your screen. Anyway, to get rid of this little hook on the G, you're going to right-click, and you're going to release your compound path. You're going to grab that G and scoot it away. And then if you want, you can reselect all of these and um, make it a compound path again. Now, that was like extra steps you don't need to do. I could have just moved that shape down and not have had to deal with that G. But we're moving along. Okay, so from here, if you want to trace by color, this is a new feature that Silhouette did, which is pretty cool. But again, not something that I use a ton. And then also you can do a magnet trace. All right, next, this is your image effects. I don't use this at all, ever, but here they all are. If you've been wondering where they went, this is for um, more people that are using it um, from a design perspective, like on screen. So there's that. Fonts, this is my favorite thing. Um, <laughs> I have a font addiction, and I'm proud of it, and it's okay. Anyway. Um, let me just show you guys some cool things here um, that the that you can do in the font because they have changed some things, which is great. So I'm just going to use my Little Lights by Laura here again, and um, I'm just going to show you guys that they added this, which is a game changer. So before, you used to have to go to the character map and like squint your eyes and hope that you could see all the different things that come um like the characters that come with the fonts especially the number one that a lot of people use is the samantha upright which is a purchased font um and it's well worth the purchase here you can now go in and you can see all of the additional characters now the really cool thing about this is you no longer have to click on it and get little squares. You can just double click and boom, there it is. That is so awesome. Thank you, Silhouette. We greatly appreciate it. Um, and the cool thing is you can make these even bigger. So you really don't have to squint anymore. You can actually see the darn things. So move right along. Um, you can do, a, depending on certain fonts, you can underline them and you can um, right justify them, center justify them, which I'll show you here in a second. I'm just going to double click on here and I'm going to um, hit enter. Now, on the silhouette font in particular, sorry, on the Samantha font in particular, there's a huge gap here. So you can scoot this on your line spacing like that. And then if you wanted to you can change your character spacing and spread your little letters out more or less, which I'm going to keep them nice and close together because I'm going to show you guys how to weld them um, in a second. But you can also choose here if you want to center them or left justify, right justify, flip the inversion, whatever. Um, but I'm going to click back up here real quick and I'm going to go to unfill because I want to show you guys See how you have all of these things overlapping each other? I'm going to right click and I'm going to ungroup. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to weld. And now all of these um, that would once cut individually are all going to cut together now. I'm going to right click again and I'm going to choose make that a compound path. 
Now, if that was really fast for you, there is an actual weld here in the modify panel. There was before, it just used to be at the top. Um, but everything that I just did, you could do here as well, okay? So it's up to you if you want to click or right click, either way. Okay, uh, moving along here. All right, this is um, a very helpful um, piece as well. This is where um, they kind of compiled a bunch of different tools into one screen. So if you've been like wondering well, where the heck did the rotation icon go, it's in the now the transform tab. Goofy, but here it is. So starting here, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to release this compound path just so I can show you guys real quick. Um, if you're text, I'm just putting these together so that they'll move together. Um, if your text gets out of alignment, this is the tab you want. So let's say I have these two things. I want to select them both. And let's say I want to center them on my page. I would click this here. And that is now centered into the middle of my page. Let's say I want to center the two things. There you go. Don't know why you'd want to do that in that circumstance, but that is a very handy feature at other times. Here's if you wanted to left justify them or center them. And the reason for this, opposed to when you can do it here, is because when you go in and you make any alterations to your text, you no longer can use these features. So that is where these come into hand. Now, if you have multiple lines and you want them to be spaced correctly, vertically or horizontally, that's what that tool is for. Here, this is just to give you an idea of scale. If you wanted to make your text bigger or smaller and you didn't want to um, use the corner air to draw it out, you can set um, specific dimensions. This is if you want to rotate it. And if you want to bring it back to 90 degrees and that lines both of them up, um, 45 degrees, whatever you want to do. That's that. And then um, this is if you want to move it a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right instead of using your arrow keys, which I just use my arrow keys on my screen. And then this is if you want to change the angle of your text or the angle of your shape. So that's your transform key. Um, this is your replicate key. So, or icon, I don't know why I'm calling them keys. You can either um, right click and you can duplicate. That's a little trick. Or you can go here and you can duplicate to the left, to the right, to the up, to the down. You can have four rows of it, five rows of it. You can fill your whole page with it. Um, you can mirror something. So if you wanted to mirror this up or down, this is what all of this does. Um, a lot of this stuff can be done on a right click as well. So like, for example, I could flip it horizontally if I'm making a heat transfer vinyl, or I can um, flip it vertically if I want it to be upside down for whatever reason. So yeah, that is your replicate. And this is a new feature. You can change how many numbers of copies you want, which is a very cool feature. And um, this is, um, to show your grab handle, this is right here, okay? So that's that. Here's your weld. I kind of went over that already. I jumped ahead. Um, this is to make a compound path or to release a compound path. Personally, I prefer to right click and do that. I think it's easier and faster. Offset. This is your best friend. Um, I will go over this in the next um, video. So I'll go over offset panel and then this is uh, a new pop-up panel and then here's some additional um, things down here but I will come back at you here in a second and give you guys um, the rest of the tour on what all of these icons do.